Hey, everybody, welcome back. This is our free training on Axie Infinity. As a thank you for joining, we wanted to create a whole bunch of really free, great content and a, and a community where you can ask questions about crypto. Um, and we'll answer as many as we can and make videos just so that people can get up to speed. And I just want to be really clear, like we're not recommending that you invest in Axie or work in Axie or any of that. Like none of what we're doing is investment advice. None of it is, um, you know, we're, we're not trying to be your financial advisor or your fiduciary or anything like that. Uh, what we're trying to do is help people get comfortable with interacting in Web3, help people understand what's happening with Web3 so that they can see for themselves, like how the world is changing, how technology is changing and really make their own decision about what they want to do in relation to that. But being left behind sucks. And there's so many people with so many questions. They just don't have a trusted place to go to get their questions answered. So again, I'm not giving you financial advice. Everything in crypto is risky and nobody knows the future. Um, but I've been able to do some pretty cool stuff. And I want to share some of my journey in a way that will get you hopefully the place where I'm at, where like, I understand the future, I see the future, and I really want to be a part of this for the next five or 10 years and get excited about it. So we're going to start out with one game that we're going to talk about. It's called Axie Infinity. Uh, and this is probably the most widely played game in the play to earn space right now. And just to give you a sense of what Axie is, it's a card trading playing game where these little characters, they play cards with each other and they fight each other and they battle each other in the arena. You can go on adventures and you can earn tokens for doing different things in the game, which are called SLP. There's multiple tokens. I'll talk about the token economics in a minute. You can dig into the website here at axieinfinity.com. That's A-X-I e infinity.com and join the discord and learn all about it. But we just want to give you a kind of a tutorial guide on how to get set up. So why is this important? Well, if you're thinking about this from uh, an investing perspective, again, this is not investment advice. It's just how I think of it. It's like, I don't want to play this game necessarily. I don't have time for that. And I want to get leverage on my money. So what is better than being able to sponsor somebody who couldn't afford to play otherwise because the assets within the game are too expensive for them? but they want to play the game and earn a living and quit their job. And that earns me a return. So let's just talk about some real uh, examples where like I've already set up five of these teams, they're cranking along and they're creating SLP and I can track their, um, their, their earnings and everything in real time. So if we look at, you know, the different people, you know, some of the newer folks, they're not earning as much every day. Some of the more seasoned folks are earning more every day. And these numbers will go up and down on a daily basis. This is how much unclaimed we have. This is how much total we have. And then their ranks and their share and all that great stuff. So this helps me track all my numbers. But basically, if you work all this out and you figure out the exchange rate, I'm earning between 1000 and 1500 US dollars a month with these five Axie teams for which I paid about five or $6,000 to set up. So as you can tell, that's a pretty lucrative opportunity. I'm making about 300% of my money a year. That's before any asset appreciation. So I bought before all the crazy hype. And recently when everybody started buying, the price has gone up. Um, and now I have about 30 axes, five teams. Um, I have as well, a bunch of AXS that's staked, which we can talk about here in a second, uh, which is their governance token, which is a lot higher than SLP. SLP trades for like eight to 11 cents, maybe six or seven on the low end. Uh, recently, I think it's been as high as 30 cents. AXS on the other hand, I started buying before I even looked at the game at like 50, $60. Now it's worth as high as $150 and I'm staking it to get 130% yield. So when you start adding all these numbers up, I've probably invested maybe six or seven grand in Axie and I've got a portfolio that's worth 15, 20 and the game is earning me a thousand to $1,500 US every single, um, every single month. So when you start doing all these numbers and you're like, well, I could stick money into a rental property or you know, something maybe a little safer, but I'm not going to make much yield. And then I have a lot of headaches like toilets and tenants, or I can have five or 10 people or a hundred people playing in a game for me in the Philippines and they get to quit their jobs, which makes me super happy um, and work on this. And I get to make money as well. So uh, I would like to continue to increase this again, not financial advice, but this is what I'm looking at. This is exciting to me. And I really like, eventually my goal is to have at least 10 players in at least 10 different games churning uh, tokens in these games that have some stability and, and cash flow, and then also invest in the assets of these games, which may be worth something more than they are in the future, right? Uh, we have no idea. There's just no way to tell, but I'm placing my bets and I'm excited about it. So, so let's talk about Axie. We're going to set this up from complete scratch and I'm going to guide JJ. Uh, say hi, JJ, please. Hi, JJ, please. 
Hi, JJ, please. So JJ has never, ever played Axie Infinity before. He's pretty savvy in the crypto world. He helps me out with a lot of stuff. He understands the tech. Um, but most importantly, he's never touched Axie before. He's going to have the exact same beginner questions that you do. And I'm going to walk him through getting set up from entirely scratch for free right now. I'm just going to give this to you guys as a training just to give you a way to get up to speed on everything that I know. And I'm certainly not an expert. Um, this is not going to be as focused on the actual playing of the game. So if you're somebody who actually wants to play this game, there's probably better ways to learn that. And I could recommend you to them. Uh, but for me, I'm an investor. So I'm going to look at this as an investment. I'm going to look at this as something that I'm doing to earn money uh, and how to manage that from that perspective. And additionally, like I said, this is a disclaimer again, I'm, I'm not telling you to do anything whatsoever. I'm not telling you to buy or sell any securities. I'm not telling you to invest in Axie. I don't even want you to spend a dollar. I'm just wanting you to understand this opportunity that exists that's called play to earn gaming and give you a real example in real life of somebody who's doing it uh, successfully. So Let's get started without further ado. Let's get you over to JJ and have you um, start from scratch. Awesome. So stop and share and go ahead, JJ. Let's get rolling. Okay. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to want to go and set up a Ronin wallet. And you want to Google where that is so that we don't get the wrong link. It's a side chain that is off the Ethereum chain. So that's the main layer one. So it's essentially a layer two that does, um, so you want to go to skymavis.com. That's their website. Oh, it looks like you already have it. So remove that from Chrome. Let's set this up from completely scratch. Yeah, remove. You don't have one set up already, do you? No, I, I, I think I downloaded it when you told me to. I have not done anything with it. Okay, great. So just remove it. Let's start from complete scratch. So first thing is you're always going to Google and make sure you're in the right place. So we're going to go to Sky Mavis. That's the website that Axie is hosted on. And we're going to get it from there. So we don't just trust some random... Um, SkyMavis.com. Yep. So SkyMavis is the company that owns Axie Infinity. And then you go to products. And you go to Axie Infinity from there. Cool. And now we know we're on the right website. And now we want to scroll all the way down. We want to find the links that are on their website. So scroll all the way to the bottom. And they should give you all the links. Okay, so getting started should have all the links that you need. Uh, official onboarding portal. All right, get started. Here we go. This is great. So get started. Create one and wallet. So this will give you all the links and walk you through everything. And I'll just kind of commentate as we go through. So first thing is we're going to get the extension for Chrome. We're going to add it to Chrome. Add extension. All right, now it's there, great. And now we're gonna to go to step two, which is back on the website. Welcome to Axie Infinity. Yep, okay, now we're gonna to get to go to next. Uh, we wanna buy Axies on our marketplace. So the first thing we have to do is deposit ETH into the Ronin bridge. So we just gotta move some money over in order to do that. Um, there's only a transaction fee when moving from ETH to Ronin. Once you're on Ronin, there are no transaction fees. You can send up to 100 transactions a day. But first, we have to get started by setting up a Ronin wallet. So you're going to click on the Ronin icon. You're going to say, I'm new. Let's get set up. And then you're going to enter a password. Obviously, you're going to keep that private. Let's see if it, if it shows up. No. Okay, cool. So yeah, JJ is going to enter his password. It's going to be really a uh, strong one. I recommend using letters, numbers, uppercase, lowercase, special characters, the whole thing. And make it something that you can remember because otherwise you'll have to reset your wallet from the seed phrase, which isn't a big deal. You get all your assets and everything back, but it can be a little nerve wracking when you can't remember your password and you can't get in your wallet. So uh, go ahead and create your wallet. Now you're going to get your seed phrase and your recovery phrase. Now we're going to uh, pause the, um, the screen share on this video while JJ writes that down. I'll tell you a little bit more about the wallet and how it works. So no share for now. JJ is going to do a seed phrase. But basically what he's doing is he's copying down either 12 or 24 words onto two pieces of paper. I, um, you know, you can use index cards, post-it notes, uh, some hardware wallets like Ledger come with that. Uh, you may want to set up, if you plan to put a lot of money into this wallet from scratch, you want to set up a Ledger wallet so that you have um, that additional layer of support and security before you start moving assets on there. Um, that would be, I think, a, a smart thing to do. And that just takes an extra step. So you go into, once it's all set up, 
there's a add hardware wallet version on um, Ronin and you just add a different address. So whatever the main address is going to be your burn wallet, that's uh, where you can just keep a little bit of money and move things around and maybe buy things. And then when you want to hold assets or store assets, you move them to the, um, to the ledger wallet, uh, which will make people have to sign if they're, if they do somehow nefariously access your, your own wallet, they would have to sign the transaction in order to move things with the physical device. So that wouldn't be able to do it. Um, so JJ, just let me know when you are complete in writing everything down. Brad, I am always complete. And okay, great. Here we are. great. Your wallet's been created. So now you got your seed phrase. It's hopefully double, double. Uh, you have a two different pieces of paper. You just put them in two very safe and secure places that are protected from fire and flood and theft. And uh, on we go. Okay, cool. So now we go back to the startup guide. And the next step is uh, go to next. So if you were somebody who was looking for a scholar, which is the people we want, they would go to this Discord community to apply for a scholarship from somebody like us who has the money to scholarship uh, to give them a scholarship to stake them, or you would just begin um, depositing ETH using the Ronin Bridge. So let's go to that. So just go to click Deposit ETH Using the Ronin Bridge. It's on the, left, the right-hand side there. Yeah, there you go. So this is the way to do that. So you go to Deposit. You unlock your MetaMask. Oh, you got to share your whole screen again. Oh, am I not? I don't think so. All right, one second. There we go, desktop. Okay, so you're sharing your whole screen, so you'll be able to see everything. You're gonna unlock your mess, your your MetaMask. Oops. Put that click, part up. click the right button. There you go. <laughs> okay, cool. So now it's connected to the right button. You're gonna hit next. You're gonna connect, and you're gonna be on the Ethereum network. Perfect. So now, if you wanted to send money to an address, you'd go into the Ronin wallet. You grab your Ronin wallet address, which is just click on it right there at the top. Yep, bada bing, copy address. And then you put it in there. It should say Ronin in the beginning. If you send it to an Ethereum address, you will lose the funds. So don't send to an Ethereum address. People will think, oh, if I just replace the OX with Ronin, that's the same thing. It is not the same thing. You will not get that money back. Very important disclaimer. So always send it to your Ronin address on the bridge. Don't ever use the Ethereum network to transfer the funds. That's why the bridge exists. And once it's on the bridge, then you don't have to pay any more money to move it around and transact. So you're going to select the asset that you want to move, and you're just going to click the little hamburger stack to, to select ETH. And then you're going to choose the amount that you want to move over. And we're just going to do a test transaction to see how much it costs. So hit next. All right, confirm. All right, so gas right now is pretty high. So we're looking at a transaction fee of about 125 for a total of about 400 bucks. So if you're going to move money over, my recommendation, if you're going to do that, again, not a recommendation to buy anything, but if you're going to move money over, you may as well wait until the gas is lower and you might as well move enough so that you have enough for how many transactions you're going to create, right? So what I did is I initially put in enough for one team. I tried it out. I decided I liked it. And then I moved over in one chunk enough money for like five or six teams so that I could create and have a little extra and not have to pay gas fees multiple times. Because once it's on the bridge, like I said, no gas fees. So uh, let's just presume that you had already moved it over. And now let's talk about buying and selling. So let's go back to the tutorial. And that usually takes you know 10 minutes or less to move it over. Uh, now we're going to go to next. And you're going to go and create an account on the Axie Marketplace. So you're going to click into that. So there's two sides to this game. There's the wallet, and then there's the active account. You can have as many wallets as you want. You can have as many active accounts as you want. And just because you have access to the account does not mean you have access to the wallet because you need the wallet to sign for transactions. So the way scholarships work is you give them a wallet, you give them your axes in that wallet. You still control that wallet. And you give them a login to log into the account to play the game. They can play the game and use your assets in the game, but they don't actually need the wallet to do that. So you get to maintain control of the wallet and they get to play the game and earn money by you sending them their part of the tokens on uh, every two weeks or every month or whatever you guys decide. So really, like um, they're taking more risk than you are because they could end up not getting paid. 
whereas you control all the money in the assets. So there's no way they can sell your tokens. There's no way they can sell your axes. There's no way they can transact in the wallet without you. Um, you would have to send it to their personal wallet for you to do that. So you always create the wallets. And I have a little bit of a system to do this. So um, you're going to go ahead and log in up on the right-hand corner there with your own wallet. And then you're just going to sign. And now you're in. And then we're going to put your name in there, whatever you want to be called, whether it's your gamer handle or your name, doesn't have to be a number. There you go. So now he's got his gamer handle in there and then he's going to set up his email and his password. Maybe not sharing the password with everybody, but well, I, I guess I'm not going to use LastPass because it shares it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we'll just get rid of that. Yeah, just just do something that's not going to show. And now I just want to remind everybody that if you wanted to share this password and this login with your player, your scholar, that's perfectly acceptable. They still can't access your wallet. You never give them access to your wallet. You never give them any of your assets into their personal wallet. And you never under any circumstances share your seed phrase or any of your passwords in your wallet to them because you never want to give them access to your wallet. I'm going to stop sharing so I can get this confirmation code. Yep. You have to confirm an email and then you're good to go um, with that. Also, if you have multiple scholars, you probably don't want to share the passwords with multiple scholars. I, what I did is I had one manager to manage the other four. So I have five teams and the manager gets a percentage of their production in exchange for helping them, making sure they're up and running, making sure they're maximizing their efforts, making sure they're hitting the bonus tiers that we do every month, making sure that if they're sick, they, they get covered. He's got an extra device he can play on. Um, that also reminds me, if you have multiple accounts, you can't play on the same device because you'll get shut down and your access will be locked and it's a whole customer support issue. So you got to make sure that if you're going to play multiple accounts, they have to be from different people or different devices at the very least. And even the different device is a little bit shady, but um, it's just against TOS. It's not like you're going to lose your assets, but it's a pain in the butt to get them locked and have to figure that out. So, so now he's all logged in. You can see that he doesn't have any ETH in there because we haven't moved it over but it'll tell you how many tokens you have. And again, there's two different tokens in this universe. There's the AXS token, which is the governance token. It's worth about $140, $150 right now. Um, the SLP token is worth about seven, eight cents. It's been as high as like 30. Um, and AXS is trading at all time high. And I want you to understand that you can do different things with this. So you can buy axes, which are the characters that you play in the game. You can buy land, which is not yet rolled out. They've only released 25% of it as a presale. And you can buy items. I'm not as familiar with the items. I haven't really needed to use them yet. I think they're used as bonuses and things for uh, prize pools and events and giveaways. Uh, there's something to understand here. Like Axie Infinity does about two and a half billion dollars in volume. Uh, it's something around 28 and 30 million a day uh, so far. And they uh, have some incredible numbers when it comes to like prize pools. So if you're a top Axie player and you're in the top 10, I think the, pri the prize for being in the top 10 is like $11 million or $15 million or some crazy thing. It's like 80,000 AXS tokens times whatever they're worth. So it's a lot of money. Um, so if you want to buy your first Axies, you can go ahead and do that. Now, what I tend to do is the players of the game know all the rules. They know what's a good Axie, what's not a good Axie. Anything you see on this first page is usually cheap and they're usually being bought very quickly because the floor right now is very high. Like if you click on one of these $46 ones, they're, I guarantee they're not for sale. So you, you go to click the button and it's not available, right? But it takes time for that to be updated because at 46 bucks, somebody's grabbing that. Anything under hundred bucks is gonna go like hotcakes and that number is always rising as this game gets more popular. When I started buying, a decent Axie team was like 1000 to 1200 bucks, um, And the junk Axies that allow you to get more energy, which we'll talk about in a minute, would be like 50 to 100 bucks. Now, the junk Axies are like 125 to 175 and the uh, good Axies are 300 plus, uh, sometimes four and 500, depending on how good they are. You can also breed them. You can do all different types of things. You can fight them. Um, and there's a whole bunch of playing mechanics, which you can go into later, but let's just focus on the setup for now. So 
you can buy your axes, you can set them up into your wallet and then move them over into your player's wallet. But let's show you how to set up multiple wallets and keep track of everything. Cause I think that's the next thing. So let's go to the Ronin wallet on the right-hand side. And if you click on the little man on the top or woman, whichever person, uh, you can go to connect hardware wallet, like I talked about before. So you can make this even safer. That's what I recommend. And then you can go to create account. So when you create account, you want to name it the same as the name of the player account that's going to be attached to as the, as the scholar. So the scholar, the player account that they use with the login and password and the wallet that you're going to use for them to transfer their assets into so they can play should all have the same name. And I just name it whatever that person's name is. And that makes it easy. Uh, if they have the same name, I'll just, I'll use their last name or something. Um, so that helps keep everything in track. So if you have five accounts, you know what's moving in, what's moving out, and then it makes it really easy to track everything on tools like um, the Axie Scholar Tracker or uh, a spreadsheet. So let's just use a, a random name for now. Let's call it Joe or whatever. Or you could do Scholar number two, that works too. Let's put Joe though. I like to personalize everything. And then once this is all set up, I like to have them pick their own team because it gives them ownership over the process. They tend to pick the thing that suits their strengths best so that they can compete in this game. And if they're not producing, well, it's on them. They had every opportunity to, to do it right. They can't blame you or anybody else because they chose the axes and they played them the way they wanted to play them. So their strategy either won or didn't. And if they're not producing, then you can have a conversation about uh, is the scholarship right for them. But it, let's assume everything goes great. They're producing. They have more ownership over being able to name the axes being able to pick the axes they want in the first place within a certain budget, right? You don't just tell them, hey, spend $10,000. You say, hey, listen, up to, let's say 1200 bucks, go pick your three axes and the ones that you want. And then if you get really good, I'll bonus you out by giving you more energy by buying you a bunch of cheap axes. So a team of 10 axes gets twice as much energy as a team of three axes. Even if you only play four, five, six of them, um, the extra ones will give you more energy, which allows you to play longer and earn more up to like maybe two and a half times as much. So even when you do the math, let's say it was like a thousand dollar team versus a $1,700 team, you're actually making more on the $1,700 team than you were on the thousand dollar team uh, per dollar. Right? So your dollars are working harder. I only do that with the ax with the players that are producing the most. So we could get into numbers, but like you're looking about 150 to 250 uh, a day on a three person. So that's like, what does that actually work out to be? If uh, let's just use SLP at 10 cents to make it simple math, that would be uh, between 150, I'm sorry, bet uh, between 15 and $25 a day. You would usually split that either 45, 50 or 55%, sometimes 60% goes to them if they get like a bonus or something like that. And that just stacks up every day while they play the game. And then you pay them out on the 15th, whatever the split is, or um, every 15 days. So you can have multiple accounts going, you have multiple logins, you, they can keep track of that. You can get an Axie manager, they can have them all working underneath you. But the point is here, if you get them the buy-in and they're committed, they could probably spend three, four hours a day playing this and make more than a full-time income, especially if they're in the Philippines or a place like that. Um, so what questions have come up for you, JJ, as we're talking about Axie Infinity and how this works? So explain a team and how would you build that team properly? Yeah. So again, a team of axes is a minimum of three axes. So if you just click into any axie, like one of the $300 ones, you'll see they have different stats. And again, I don't consider myself an expert at playing axie. I'm just learning how to invest in axie. And I'm like getting people set up with this because I think it's interesting to just understand how this works. So based on the stats and their strategy, they're going to choose in the budget, they're going to choose the axes that are the best for them. Um, these ones won't go as fast because they're higher priced. Anything under 200 bucks is going to go very quick. So if you're looking in like the three to $500 range, you're probably going to get a little more time to decide. But basically you're looking for, if you scroll down those stats, you're looking for, have they been bred before? That's valuable if they haven't been bred too many times, because you can only breed them seven times. Uh, you can see at the top, the breeding zero out of seven. Um, you can see what class they are. I think there's seven or eight different classes, what abilities they have. There's four different abilities. Uh, they're changing the rules all the time as far as what the abilities can do. They're kind of balancing the game and they do what's called seasons. I think they're in season 19. So if you've ever played like a multiplayer game, you'll see that every season they change the rules a little bit because of, of feedback that they've gotten. It tells you what parents they had. Keep going down. 
And if you go all the way down, um, if there's a transaction history, it'll tell you that too, but it doesn't seem like this one. This one was just bred and then listed. So it doesn't seem like this one has a transaction history. So the- so if you um, have two axes, you can breed? Correct. Yeah. So if you have two axes that have to be adults, I think it takes seven days to be an adult. Um, they can breed if you have, I think one AXS token, a certain amount of SLP that goes up each time they breed. So a virgin axie, which is zero breeding, means they, um, they pay less to use SLP uh, to breed. Uh, and that's listed somewhere. I, I don't know where exactly off the top of my head, but essentially um, you can breed them and then make babies and then sell those or, or fight those too. And you breed them based on traits and there's tons of breeding guides and things along that way. Again, I don't proclaim to be an expert. I just find the people who are really dedicated um, in the discord. So if you pop over to the discord, uh, I'll show you kind of how to find your scholars. That would be the next thing. Okay. I am not in the discord yet. So yeah, we'll have to get you into the discord. So that's good to set up from scratch. So now that you kind of understand the marketplace a little bit, we'll show you the discord, how to find your scholars, and then, uh, we'll get you set up on the staking and the liquidity pool. That would be the other things to know. So you can actually get your money back out of Axie if you decide to. So the Discord is, you just have to go to uh, axieinfinity.com and find the Discord. That's what it looks like. So next, so if you're going to play the game, you'd want to download it on your computer, obviously. I did. I played it for 10 minutes. I was bored to tears, to be perfectly honest. Uh, but if you go to the top right here, it'll say join your Discord. And this is the next place to go. So you're going to go to Axie Infinity Global which has a ridiculous number of people on it, 800,000 people in it. That's pretty amazing. Uh, you're going to join that. And then for your purposes, you're just going to look around. Cool. Submit. Agree. Submit. You're going to go into the scholarship role here. Where is it? Go down, go down, go down. Scholarship applications. And you're going to see that this is on slow mode. They can only post every six hours. So they can post up to four times a day. And you have an unlimited supply of people that want to play this game for you. So what I look for is people who can speak well, speak English well, people who are a little more on the entrepreneurial side. I had to talk to six or seven people before I found my, my main guy. But he was so hungry, he recruited all his friends You know, when he realized I had like capital to put to work. And he made his own team and now he's getting a percentage of their thing and he's backing them up and making sure they produce at a high level. Like he's managing all of it for me. And we had that expectation from the beginning. I'm like, Hey, if I'm going to do this, I have the money. I'll set you up. Let's try it out for a few days, see if it's a good fit. And then if, uh, if it's working and you're doing what you say you're going to do, and I'm doing what I say I'm going to do, I'll give you more leverage by giving you more teams to work under you. But literally there's thousands and thousands of people every single day who are asking for this. So you can either just put in, hey, I'm looking for scholars, DM me and see who shows up, or you can reply to these people and friend them and, and get them set up. Um, so, th but there's no, what I'm trying to explain is there's no limit to the number of people. So don't like settle on like the first person who, who responds, talk to maybe five, six, seven people, and you'll very quickly get a sense of like, who's a joker and who's like legit and, and wants to do this and is real and like entrepreneurial a little bit and like understands that this is a business and treats it that way. And uh, pays attention and like ask them a ton of questions about the game. That's how I learned really most of the stuff that I just showed you and some of the stuff about the game mechanics. I just learned by asking this person a ton of questions just to understand, did they get what they were talking about? And um, had they done, you know, some of the things that, that I wanted to do. And that's how I learned a ton of stuff. It's just diving in and actually taking the time. And it probably took me about two weeks to get up to speed. And then after that, it was, it was just gravy. So um, there's a learning curve, no matter how you do this, no matter how many videos you watch on it, I just recommend getting after it, just getting after it, being in the, in the discord, being in the game, playing around with it, understanding it well enough and getting your scholars to explain things to you that you don't understand and realize that these are folks that live in a second world or third world country. In a lot of cases, they may not have a lot of understanding of finance and how to move money around and what exchanges to use. And, you know, a thousand dollars is like a lot of money to them. That's more than they make in several months. So you need to understand when you're talking to them, like they're going to get things that you don't because they understand the game and you're going to get things that they don't. So this is an opportunity for them to learn from you as well. 
um, and, and to benefit each other. So I look at it as like a, a mutually beneficial partnership because guess what? People in first world countries, they can't afford to play Axie Infinity all day. They just can't. They're not going to make enough money to survive. But somebody in the Philippines, they can quit their job and have a really nice lifestyle and work about half the time they do now. Um, so this is the Discord. I just wanted to show you that one thing, but you can learn a lot by just being in here. And there's, you know, we've seen 30 people already post since we've, since we've been talking about it. Uh, so let's go back to, to the Axie marketplace and just show you a few more things. I'm going to show you how to move money in and out of here and how it works. So when I first started, there were a lot of issues with the money piece. They just released a staking platform. Um, you go to Katana in a new URL, katana.roninchain.com slash swap, I believe. Katana is K A. Dot Ronin Chain. Try dot com and see if that comes up. Yep, here we go. So this is their sanctioned liquidity pool. So what this means is that in order to gain liquidity on the tokens that they produce, which are AXS and SLP, people can stake ETH and other tokens like USDC in order to provide that liquidity. So you can either be a, you can swap and pay a transaction fee which is what most people do. You can pool your tokens in there and stake them to earn a yield, or you can farm them, uh, which we can go into a little more nuance, but essentially you can provide liquidity and it's the most clean and uh, transparent liquidity pool I've ever actually seen. So they'll tell you exactly how much is in there. It's not a black box. You can see your yield rates. You can see why it's that way. It's actually really cool. So let's play around. So JJ, just do what you're going to do and play around and I'll, I'll show you what to look at. So basically, this is the analytics platform here. This tells you exactly how much is staked. And you can see there's 1.23 billion or 1.32 billion in liquidity right now. So this is a very liquid market. You can move lots of money in and out with, with not a lot of fear of it drying up. So, but let's just start from the, the so place where we can. Pretty about. much, if I was playing the game, and I got SLP, mm -hmm. I can bring it in here. I can pool or farm it. Yep. As, long as, you have, uh, as long as you have ETH to wrap and also stake as well, because you need to stake them in a one-to-one -one ratio to add liquidity. Gotcha. Yeah, and then you get these tokens, which are SLP, WETH, LP, the liquidity pool tokens that you can then farm and, and get a reward on that too for being in the pool. So, so the swap function is the most uh, basic thing. It's just, I want to swap ETH for whatever, just select all the different tokens you can do for any of these four that are happening, right? So if I want to move to AXS, I can do that. If I go to a new tab and put in um, stake.axieinfinity.com, Now you can actually stake your Axis, your AXS, your Axie Infinity shards. So if you connect your wallet and there's something in there, it'll show you how much you have staked. Uh, like I said, I've been staking mine. I'm getting 120% on my money uh, in kind. So if AXS tokens go up, I'm going to get even more. So that's kind of nice. Um, right now it's a little bit down. We're on a down day, but it's been as high as I think 150, 160. And I was buying in, like I said, around 50, 60 bucks. So I've done really well here. And the Axies I bought lower are also up a lot too. So uh, the value of my assets has gone up, but I'm also making a return on my money. So that's the really cool thing about it from an investment pr perspective. Um, again, not investment advice, uh, but this is these are all the different things you can do. So you can buy, you can swap, you can move things onto the chain, you can keep them in this little uh, ecosystem that they've created with all these different contracts and interact with them in a way that allows you to stake, earn, swap, add liquidity, farm your liquidity tokens, and make transaction fees and all that great stuff. So there's a lot you can do with Ronin by just moving ETH on once, letting it do its thing inside the chain, playing the game, et cetera, having your teams play the game, and then um, moving things. Maybe you move SLP and AXS and stake it. That's one option. Or you move into USDC and then you send it back to the ETH chain 
and then you're back in the US. That's pretty cool. Um, there's so many different ways you can do it. So what questions about this, Jade? So you've answered, I believe, any question I have. Okay, let me go. Um, through the sheet. Yeah. All right. So a lot of questions that we've collected that people have about Axie is what are the budgets? So the budgets for Axies, again, you're going to be talking about a thousand to maybe 1500 on the high end for a team. And that's just ranging based on, um, you know, what you're going to actually have to pay. Again, the less transactions you have to do that go from the ETH chain to the Ronin chain, the less gas fees you pay. So if you're going to do it, you might as well put enough on there to do all the things you want to do um, instead of having to make multiple things like, oh, buying one team and then five teams and then 10 teams, like just put the money on there and then you're, you're good to go and you can stake it while it's sitting there in case you haven't uh, put it in. Uh, which axes to buy, people have different strategies. Every season that changes. So I would rather have people select their, um, you know, their, really, uh, their, their own teams, right? I want them to to select ones that they feel really good about. And then you want to use the Ronin bridge to move the ETH over. Um, you can create a little team, you know, you got your things going on. Let's see, setting up the sea wall. We talked about all that. Facebook group, buying axes, game tips, setting up the discord, did that. Scholars, we talked about that. They're like VAs that play video games for you. Pretty straightforward. Um, how to use QR codes. That's pretty straightforward. We could show you that real quick. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything in this video. Obviously ask questions if you have them. Um, yeah. That's so this, if I was, so this right here is if I was playing on my tablet or phone, I can just log in using this QR code, correct? Yeah, exactly. That's basically it. So we you need to edit this video out now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, they could just go ahead. Yeah. So, so I think we can just edit that whole recap part out. I don't think we got any more value out of that. So, no. yeah, I think we hit everything on the head.